Hello, fans, and welcome to This Day in Baseball. We're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game. And before we do that, I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio. And there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. After 156 games, eight, two more than the regular schedule calls for. The Buns from Brooklyn, the Giants from New York have come down to the wire to where it is all or nothing. What happened before? Even the Giants' closing rush from 13 and a half out will be forgotten when the final decision is rendered at the Polo Grounds this afternoon. 20 years from now, the fans will be talking about this afternoon's hero as yet unknown, but the man and the hour are about to meet. If there is a goat, his name will echo down the corridor of time, coupled with Fred Perkle of Bonehead fame and Freddie Slotgrass, whose muffed fly ball cost the Giants the World Championship of 1912. The tension has been building until the strain has become terrific. Neither Dresden nor DeRocher can afford to gamble. The leadoff batter will be Huey Reese for our uh, Carl Perot for the Brooklyn Dodgers in the top half of the first inning. Magley, the barber, ready to lather the Dodgers against him. It'll be Newcomb. We'll pause for station identification. This is the second largest network in the world, the Liberty Broadcasting System. In the dark, gloomy, somber skies at the Polo Grounds in New York, it's the greatest show on earth. The Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Giants final sudden death showdown payoff game. The playoff payoff. Here's Carl Frillo against Sal Magley. First half of the first inning in a game I'm sure that we will all long remember. Pee Wee Reese on deck, Duke Snyder down in the hole. Cold blooded Sal, the outlaw from Drummondville. Better enough, Vera Cruz starts from the line. The first pitch of a historic game breaks it down. Side armor right outside for ball one. One ball and no strikes. This game adds another dramatic page to the history of the New York Giants, whose history already covers 70 years of one of the most dramatic stories in sports. Great giant names have been on this field before us. None in quite so difficult a spot as Sal Magley this afternoon. Magley in the windup. Giant right had to bring that black arm low and outside for ball two. Two balls, no strikes, first inning. Sal Magley pitching. Carl Furlow on the take chin. Two and nothing. Magley working, first inning. Dodgers fame Sim Foley Band is here, but has competition this afternoon from a Giant Band. Three buglers and one bass drummer. Giant Band calls itself official mob from Mulberry Street. Everybody is here. Jam-packed, enthusiastic crowd. Magley delivers. He's in there with a strike across the belt. Whipping fastball. Crackling down there. Pops in the middle of West Western. For a low with a count of two and one. Little Reese, the Dodgers' fleet-footed field captain, is on deck. Duke Snyder down in the hole. First half of the first inning. The maiden frame. Liberty's final game of the year. Carl Frillo waits. Slow stance, steps forward, strides, takes right two call on the outside corner. As Magley, the air splitting precision expert, he's one across the outside corner, a curve that didn't break too well, but held it anyway. And it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, first inning. Dodgers and the New York Jazz. Need we say more? Out on the mound, Magley, abrasive, blue, black bearded, right hander, pitches the two two ball, side on, swung on, Nick foul, back toward the Jazz dugout, coming up on top, racing for it is Westrum, but is unable to play it. It's back into the giant dugout. Sal Magley was the logical choice today for the big one of the big ones. Magley, an old head at 34 years, has been around for 13 years in baseball. He has pitched under the most difficult possible circumstances. Banned from baseball for jumping to the Mexican League. Sal Magley worked in Drummondville. He worked in heat, in drizzle, in driving rain, in broiling sun. He worked in Tampico, riding buses. Riding mules, riding everything. He is one of the toughest pitchers in the game. Certainly one of the most taciturn. Kicks, fires, two two balls, six three call. So there's Perot, and the drama begins late on the line. These two managers must have whirling, tumultuous thoughts going through their minds. I can imagine. I can just imagine. You put your whole life in a game, they must be thinking, and then they give you one afternoon to make good. 
Sudden death, playoff showdown. It's race now. Frollo took a straight three call on the 2 2 pitch. Now Magley rocks, throws over arm, drives him back from the plate as Reese puts away. One ball and no strikes with one out. Magley, 141 strikeouts. The, Gi- the Giants shining 21, 23 game winner. Well rested against the Don Newcomb, who has pitched 14 and two thirds innings in five days. Can't be so well rested. Magley throws down Reese. He fouled it off home plate. One ball, one strike, one out. Up. Kiwi Reese, number one. The Brooklyn Dodgers field captain. Newcomb and Magley have each hurled three shutouts this year. This is the second start between the two of them in which a decision has been rendered. Magley beat Newcomb in the only other start they've made against each other. The ancient cricket crease below the bluff on the uh, black paper-lettered shores of the Harlem River. Polo Grounds, New York. Magley bends way over as though looking through a keyhole. Starts from the windup. Reese, low over the plate. Backs away, ducking under a pitch off the top of his cap, and it's count of two and one. Reese at bat. Duke Snyder on deck. Jackie Robinson down in the hole. Second time these two have met at starters, Magley and Newcomb. August the 16th at the Polo Grounds. Magley beat Newcomb two to one. Crowd tighter the fiddle string. Playoff, payoff in Harlem. As the Giants, favorites of Harlem, meet the boys from the land across the East River, the Brooklyn Dodgers. Up ahead, grimy skies. Across through the fog beyond the Harlem River, the great gray spires of Yankee Stadium, which will be alive tomorrow with the World Series as one of these two will play. We don't know which now, but the team is about to meet the hour as Reese takes ball three outside, three and one. Three balls and one strike. Drama riding with every pitch. This is the end of it. That's before the game about whether he can pitch tonight or today. Preacher Rose said, if I do, I'll have to go right-handed. Reese drives, takes low on a Magley slide up the ball four. And here we is on. Question is whether Magley is shot. Both pitchers did appear to be shot in their warm-up. Magley to our right in front of the giant dugout along the first baseline and below us. Big Don Newcomb, who was warming up in front of the Brooklyn Dodgers dugout. Final game in the turbulent, ebbing National League race. The Giants have played on the same field for more than 60 years, longer than any other team in baseball. I've written many a page in history, and another one is being written today. So listen closely, and you can tell your grandchildren you heard the most dramatic of them all. Magley pitches. Nida takes high. One ball and no strike. The distance is for you here today, 257 feet to right field. 279 down the left field line. 483 feet to the Eddie Grant Memorial shaft in center. Underneath, Old Glory, which is unfurled from the center field masthead. The right field wall, ten and a half feet high. The left field wall, nearly 17 feet tall, with a capacity here of 55,000. Reese down at first. Snyder the batter. Magley feeds him. Fields one off, dealing high ball two. Two balls, no strike. Levine's shutout yesterday against the Giants was the seventh shutout against this team this year. They're tough to shut out. Staley got two, Sane one, Roberts one, Paulette one, Newcomb has one against the Giants, one of the seven, and Levine's yesterday, obviously. From Bernard Baruch and Tom Dewey to Brooklyn, Harry the Horse and Spanish John Phillips, you have to talk baseball in New York today. From Flatbush Avenue to Sheepshead Bay. From the Savoy Ballroom to the Harlem YMCA, from Jacobs Beach to Hamburger Heaven, this series has got the joint jumping. Eight million New Yorkers are really moving today. Left-hand batter, Snyder, 275 hitter. The outfield's almost straight away, bending over to get the sign, peeking in. Sal Magley, Weston down in catching position. Here is Snyder, ready to come up with a swing, and he takes underneath the knees for ball three. No strike. Snyder at bat. Magley having trouble with his control, which seems to be on the blink in the top half of the first inning. Magley, who never shaves before a game, lets his beard grow with normally one of the heaviest beards in the game. The barber shaving the Brooklyn Dodgers this afternoon, but shaving the corners slightly too close. He walked Reese. Walked Snyder. Is, or, uh, has 3 nothing against Snyder. On deck, Jack Robinson. A name to conjure fear in giant hearts at this point. And then Andy Pasco. Here's a 3 nothing ball. The giveaway pitch is back to ball four. <laughs> Re- 
least that second batter at first, and the hitter will be the ball of Leo DeRocher, Jack Robinson hitting 337, Andy Pascal and Zach Gil Hodges down in the hole. Must have been a million people asked me how I thought today's game would turn out. I always answer them like the news commentators, very inconclusively. I'd always say, well, it's certain that one thing will happen if anything else does, and that is that there's going to be action in the polo grounds this afternoon. Larry Jackson has begun to limber up the Giants' bullpen. All the stops are out. The pitch to Robinson. Swing on, driven down for a big hit in the hole. Here's Stevie Reed for round third on his way to the score. The throw to second hand. Batter is there. Run in. Back is Reed. One nothing. Goes that 
Huge elephant tied right hand as Don Newcomb to pick up the ball and play Daddy Stanky to score at the end of one half inning of play. The best team dodges from the land across the East River won the New York Giants nothing. The hitting list for the New York Giants, Eddie Stanky at second base, Alvin Dock is a shortstop, Don Mueller in right field, Mighty Irvin in left field. Lonnie Lockman, 279, here is the first base. Bob Thompson, the Giants here off the last few days. Batting 290 is playing third and hitting sixth. Willie Mays in the big field. Wes Western down there behind the plate. And on the hill, the barber, black-bearded Sal Magley. Magley from Niagara Falls, New York. 23 wins and six defeats for Magley. So your giant hitting list of nine. Spanky, Dark, Mueller, Irvin, Lockman, Thompson, Mays, Westrom, and Magley. The umpire at home plate, Lou Jorda, ready to go play ball for play in the last half of the first inning. Now Don Milcom is out on the mound. Eddie Stanky is up against him for the New York Giants. Stanky, last half of the first inning. Stanky, the flaming spirit, vibrantly alive, fierce competitor. It has been many times said that Eddie Stanky has glorified the base on ball. With him, the walk is a major weapon. It's an attack. For opposing pitchers, this little fella, Eddie Stanky, minute your second baseman, is baseball's most aggravating player. There is a study, the David and the Goliath of it, Newcomb and Stanky. Newcomb pumps, pitches, Stanky watches, 4-1 is outside. One ball and no strikes. Another dramatic page in ball ground history. As players here will go down alongside John McGraw and Christy Matheson and Mike Dunlin and Buck Herzog and Amos Rusey and Doyle and Frisch and them all. The pitch. Stanky watches. Strike one call across the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Last half of the first inning. Ed Stanky at that. Great base on balls. Getter holds the National League record in that department. A tough little man to get out. The man whom Branch Rickey said about. He can't run, he can't hit, he can't field, but I wouldn't trade him for Hornsby in his prime. Stanky waits. The Newcomb delivery. Swung on, beaten foul down past DeRosa along the third base coaching line. That run, surrendered by Magley in the top half of the first inning, could be a most pivotal, a most crucial run, looming ever larger as we go down mounting the scoreboards. Uh, the goose eggs on the scoreboard today. He walked Reese, then he walked Snyder, and with men on first and second after Perillo had struck out, Jackie Robbins did a first pitch single in the hole and drove home the run, by which the Dodgers leave Leo DeRocher's hated New York Giants through one to nothing in this battle of the arch rivals, last battle of the year. Here is the one and two pitch to Sankey. Ill lad, he takes below the knees on a Newcomb dropper for ball two. He threw that tremendous overarm. Dropping curve, sinking down, too low on Stanky. Two balls, two strikes. On deck, Alvin Dark of the New York Giants. Here's Don Newcomb into the windup now. He kicks, the giant right-hander fires. Stanky swings and curves it foul over near the uh, Brooklyn Dodger dugout. The string has run out of the National League. Last game, the last one there can be this year, unless for some reason this one is postponed this afternoon. Skies overhead are leaden, heavy with rain, but I think they'll go on and play this one. At least we would wait for hours and hours and hours and hours, indeed, up into the evening tonight before postponing it. President Ford Frick of the National League, soon to become the commissioner of baseball, wants to play it if at all possible. He wants that World Series to start tomorrow. Newcomb, the 2-2 ball to Stanky, and he's back to ball three. Balls and two strikes, a payoff count on Stanky. Now Newcomb's got to flank the big one down and in there to the little fellow. Pocket sized Eddie Stanky, one of the smallest players in big league baseball. A fighter in the Phil Rizzuto tra- uh, tradition. Fiery, volatile second baseman waiting. Number 22 has good eyes, Stanky. Not too fast. Infield, halfway up, outfield, shortened to the left. The pitch to Stanky, who swings, beats one foul down past the rusher. Low like old Luke Appling, stands up there, fouls him off, waiting for the one he wants. Can you remember who was in right field for the Giants in 1937 when they took their last pennant? Sure you can. It was that grand guy, Mel Ott. And now, Mel's daughter is about to be married. You feel kind of old, man? For the third time in four days, the Brooklyn Club wriggled back off the brink of the precipice into a National League tie yesterday. One more push and over they've gone. 
Newcomb takes the payoff pitch. Swing on. There's a little toy fly out toward right with left field. That goes in very fast. Stop. Close it down to the out of Sankey. Laid a blooper out in short left field. Tafco raced in to get it. And most of the crowd had probably convinced themselves that Eddie Sankey, having worked Newcomb to a 3 and 2 cap, was to be given a pass that time. But Newcomb bearing down, putting everything that he has on it this afternoon, pitching with utmost caution. Thanks one right down the wheelhouse, and Stanky had to hit it or go out of there on strikes. Here is Al Dark of the National League New York Giants. Right-hand hitter Dark, the pitch to him. Al swings, keeps off, sky-high fly along the third baseline. Coming in for it is Billy Cox, near the mound. He's got it, putting it in the well for the out of there, a cool way. The Giants, two up and two down to do it. And now the batter, Don Mueller. The teammates call him Mandrake. That's a tribute to the almost magical way that Don places his hit. He's only 23, and that's the doorway to a long and brilliant career. Mueller, who's home run hitting here at the pole grounds against Newcomb and other of the Brooklyn Dodger pitchers, has been a score point with him. On deck, Marty Irvin. Newcomb rocks the Giants. Right-hander vigorously throws. Thanks called on the outside corner. Bill Terry, the last Giant manager to bring him a winner, was on hand yesterday and is again today. The roster of celebrities here today reads like a who's who. This ball game being brought to you throughout the world on Liberty in the Armed Forces Radio Service. Newcomb's big pitch, small ball, swung on as he pulled him, beaten down to the first base coach, Freddie Fitzsimmons, who nurses the giant pitchers. Leo DeRocha wigwagging at third. Very heavy, somber skies overhead. A few birds circling the field. Probably the Brooklyn warm bat, which makes it sound like a baseball bat. Newcomb working on Mueller. Big time, kicks, fires, rocks it outside for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Newcomb against Magley. Final game of the year. The playoff, payoff, the showdown, the end, and what more could you want? A tasty menu for a Wednesday afternoon on Liberty, huh? The wind is blowing here this afternoon toward right. Will be a factor for left-hand hitters like this Mueller, who takes ball two outside, 2-2. Two, two. The deuces are up, two balls, two strikes, two out. And Don Mueller, the hitter, up with a 2.75 hitting average. He's playing right for the New York Giants. Number 22, Mueller. The deuce is really up then. Stewart at second base, Conlon first, gets third. Big Don Newcomb rocks, kicks, fires, there's a swing of the drive. Out in left field, Andy Castro goes back first, ran out, calls it into the outside side of the side on a blistering line drive to left by Mueller. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. And the guaranteeing pressure in the National League has but eight innings left to go at the polo ground. The Brooklyn Dodgers won, the New York Giants, nothing. Well, about 25,000 rooters are over here from beautiful, scenic Brooklyn. Lovely garden spot. Brighton Beach, Sheepshead Bay, Prospect Park, Bedford Avenue, flowers, trees, boys. Well, the Brooklyn Dodgers, the last one-third of the hitting list of nine, solidly confronting Sal Magley here with the chips on the line as we open the first half of the second inning. Let's see how the outer defense will play. Bill Cox, a good glove man, choked hitting right hand to Sam Street, close together in toward the plate. Third baseman in, just off the line. Dark is right toward third, off the grass. Thank you, near second, deep back in the back. The first baseman nearly on the line, the pitch. Billy Cox backs away from the strike, which catches that inside corner of a right-hand hitter. One ball, no strike. Sal Magley, the barber shaving. He has lathered the Dodgers five times this season, and they've only beaten him once. He throws down. Cox backs away from a button high pitch. One ball, one strike. You know, of all the dates marked in the Polo Grounds calendar, July the 16th, 1902, almost a half century ago, was the most famous up to the day. That was the day that John McGraw was engaged to manage the Giants. His spirit's here today. Great name. Cox swings. It's a one-hopper right back to Magley, who throws the first. He got him for the out. One to three. And Magley, after a rocky beginning in which the barber showed the first signs of nervousness that I have ever seen him show, was just a little bit awry on his control. He missed the corners on Reese, put him on, and that was what cost him. Or perhaps it was the walk to Snyder which cost him, because that was the one which advanced Reese in scoring territory, from where Jackie Robinson drove him home with a whistling single to left. Left-hand hitter Rube Walker, the South Carolinian, watches, takes a call strike. As per usual, 
The lines of the coaching boxes are already completely erased. Sorosha, wa- wasting no time getting fate and superstition on his side, did it early. Magley throws curveball, beaten back foul. Well, Magley, a name to bring threat to Brooklyn Hearts. Determined, cold, unemotional opponent. Maybe even showing the slightest signs of the wear and tear in the first half of the first inning when he walked Reese, walked Snyder, and Robinson hitting for a single. But it's early in the ball game. There's a long way to go. Here in the polo grounds, a heavy shroud of mist. Overhead, damp gray skies. The pitch taken outside. Somber October afternoon. One ball, two strikes, one out. Brooklyn won the New York Giants, nothing. 55,000 close packed bodies in the polo ground, which is taut with suspense. As two tired and nearly depleted ball games, ball teams come down to the wire. The pitch by Magley. Two ball and this for sweet three. That was a low breaking slider. That little curveball shown his throw with a sharp wrist twist. He broke it down, slid it in around the knees and left on Lee Walker out of home run and two other hits there yesterday. That's cool, and as Don Newcomb, that good hitting for some pitcher comes on. Newcomb's record this year, 20 wins and 9 defeats. Two of the best managers in baseball, two great strategists, Leo DeRocher and Charlie Dresden opposing each other in a battle to the finish. The final in the National League. Magley arms behind his head, the right hand throws. Newcomb lifts a high pop up to the left side, splashing it off as he hit late on a fastball. Hustles there and makes a basket catch of the ball to retire the side. At the end of one and a half, here at the jam packed polo grounds in New York, in baseball's history making third playoff and the only third playoff game in history, the Brooklyn Dodgers won the New York Giants zero. Up goes Don Newcomb, big right hander, unbanned, third and swing, hits one down deep the hole, Reese goes over, fields the ball, throws the first, and he's in time with his throw for the out. Pee Wee's fielding has been spectacular in this series. He, like Sal Magley, is a great player under fire. Reese sped over to his right into what would have been, for a left fleet shortstop, the hole in the left side of the infield. But he plugged the back, stuck his gloved hand in there, in the lurch, grabbed it. Through the first three out, and here is Whitey Lockman. Lockman. Newcomb pitches. Whitey swings. Hits one down to the right side. Hockey tries to back Whitey, but this is in the right field on the ground for a giant base hit. And Lockman, the potential tying run, is at first base. Hunt is the potential go ahead run. Bobby Hunt. With reference, of course, to the famous London, the Edinburgh Express. Stylish, polished ball player. Bobby Trump, must be suffered. Lock him down at first. We pass the Yankee Stadium on the way over here. We can see that flags and pennants are all decked out in preparation for the World Series. Thompson watches wide, just looking over one and ignoring the pitch, which was okay as the height in the strike zone, but a shade wide. Bob Thompson batting Willie Mays on deck. West Westroom down in the hole. Lock him down at first. Standing close to the bag as Hodges goes in for a word with his pitcher. 31 home runs and 96 runs batted in the record this year. Third time in four days. Brooklyn trying to save off the final summons in the National League. Also, the Giants, and they're in tough shape now. Trail one to nothing. Newcomb lets it go. Starts to squeeze that ball. Newcomb lets the line. It's out for the base hit. Lockman turns second, holds it second. Bobby Thompson racing for second. Two runners are going to be on second. Here it is. Reed to take his top and back toward first. He is tagged out by Gil Hodges as the New York Giants to our Brooklyn team, Herman. Up there is Willie Mays, the New York Giant right-hander. 
up until yesterday, the Giants hadn't lost a game since September the 20th. That won eight in a row, 38 out of 45, seven of the last eight. The Dodgers beat it 10 nothing. Lafayette's got him out. Newcomb throws, and Willie Mays takes strike call. One ball, one strike, two out. Mays, 275 hitter. Cox is at third for the Dodgers. Reese at shortstop. Jackie Robinson at second base. Gil Hodges at first base. Robert deep back of the back. Step off the grass. See, we hands on knees, ready, waiting. Halfway up the shortstop. Cox goes to blind with Erskine beginning to warm for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Outfield. Stand off deep to left. Arms over his head. Don Newcomb. Big Brooklyn man and the throw down. Sizzling fat ball. Driven along the left field line. The top row going back toward the wall. Go be there. He's got it. In the second inning, a real boneyard play would have had runners at first and second with one man out, Willie Mays and Weston do up. But as a result, uh, Bobby Thompson's headlong charge in the second base with Whitey Lockman already occupying the bag. Memories are brought to mind of Babe Herman who still grows green in the limbo of Brooklyn. No run, two hits, no errors, and one man left on base. Going now into the first half of the third inning at the Polo Grounds in New York, the Brooklyn Dodgers won the New York Giants nothing. At the Polo Grounds, it's a Brooklyn hitting list of Perillo, Reese, Snyder, Robinson, Tapco, Hodges, Cox, Luke Walker, and Don Newcomb. The Giants have started off Darkly indeed. You know, it's interesting that these two teams, no matter how tired, how crippled, how ailing, their pitching staff are, well, they just happen to have two 20-game winning aces ready for this final game. The Rocha and Dresden and Newcomb and Magley are ready. Well, out into the field go the Giants, looking as worried as a Bostonian going west of Worcester. The lights come on. We told you they would early this afternoon. That's three innings, two innings. No, I guess uh, three innings, actually, earlier than they were illuminated yesterday afternoon. Bagley wipes his brow. The barber, the Niagara Falls Nugget, style Magley, pitching to Carl Frollo, who led in the first inning of the strikeout, reaches for one, and looks at ball one, which twirls down low and outside. With Carl Frollo batting for the Brooklyn Dodgers, Magley peels it off. Frollo hits a weak... Uh, bounder right back to the hill. Frollo throws, or uh, Magley throws. He got it for the out. Magley to Lockman, one to three on Frollo, who has twice meekly submitted to Sal Magley. And now it'll be Pee Wee Reese, who wheedled a walk off Magley as he came up the first time and raced home from second to score on Jackie Robinson's solid bingle in the hole on the left side. Blue Jordan calling balls and strikes. Jock O'Connell at first. Bill Stewart down at second base. And Larry Getz is at third. And now for the stalwart line, for the stalwart blue line from Brooklyn, Pee Wee Reese. The shining heroes of Harlem, the New York Giants on the field. Sal Magley winds throws, and it's missing outside. Ball one, one out. Brooklyn one, the New York Giants nothing. Playoff, payoff. The final. The end of the end. The last game of the year between these two as Reese watches ball two twirled outside. Magley does definitely not appear as sharp here this afternoon as he has been in other games we've seen him, particularly the one last uh, Saturday when he four-headed the Boston Braves in a masterful shutout. If anything, Newcomb has looked the sharper. Magley throws, strike call on the outside corner. Even so, Newcomb yielded two base hits to New York Giants in the second inning, which only wretched giant base running kept from being a real threat to the big Brooklyn right-hander. The ancient picket crease below the bluff. There's one swung on, hit up into the air, out toward right field. In foul territory, Whitey Lockman's over near the grandstand. He's got it. Lockman went over to pull it down, drifting under one that was curved foul. A, kind of a powder puff hit up along the first baseline. Lockman dashed back to pull it down. So now Magley, after a rocky beginning, has retired seven batters in order. Duke Snyder is the hitter for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Snyder, S-N-I-D-E-R. Duke National League coming on the line. The World Series on the line. Snyder swings, cutting hard. Swimming in an outside pitch. I do believe that he went a fishing. Billowing breakers of the Harlem River. <laughs> out beyond the center field fence, the Snyder watches outside. One and one. Full ground. 
Bounded behind us by Coogan's Bluff in the front by the Harlem River. On the right by a huge parking lot. On the left by some apartment buildings. Smangler bends over. Peeking in for the sign. Kicks, throws, batters, cuts, cuts, strike two. One ball, two strikes. And you hear him roaring behind, don't you? This is a ball game to end them. A dipper handled, green sided nickel nipper today. A real clean breaker. Dressing from yesterday claimed that Shell and Jones were throwing a spitter. Pitch is high, two and two on Snyder with two away. The base is empty as a schoolroom in July. The outfield shaded to the left. That was a new wrinkle about that spitball. They usually the draft and the Dodgers are arguing over bean balls rather than spitballs. Magley getting the sign. Westerman crap shooting position, giving it to him. Magley feeding. Finding the touch has now gotten eight batters in a row. Since Jackie Robinson delivered the lone single off Sal Magley here this afternoon, but a most important and pivotal blow it was. A solid clutch hit smacked into the hole between Doc and Thompson at shortstop to send Reeves racing home with a glorious Brooklyn score in the first inning. Glorious, that is, for Dodger Rooters. It has cast a pall of despondency over Giant Rooters. We'll go into the last of the third with the Giants bringing up Western Magley and Stanky in a moment. Score, one nothing Dodgers. Wes Western will lead it off for the Giants. And the smiling senior from Niagara Falls, Salvatore Magley, will follow Eddie Stanky down in the hole. Stanky. West Western with a 247 hitting average is the batter for the New York Giants as we come on into this inning. Western wearing number nine, kicks around, getting a firm toe hold in the batter's box, down on his haunches. Now Rube Walker, big newcomb out on the mound for the Brooklyn Dodgers, scuffs around. And now it's play. Last half of the third inning, West Western, who broke the all time National League fielding record for catchers last year with a 999 average, is the batter. A good sticker, good power hitter, not consistent though. Swings, misses, hard play on it. Nothing in one. Newcomb pumping him home for the Brooklyn Dodgers, trying to ride that one run lead home. He got it in the first inning as Jackie Robinson, who's been the big builder for the Dodgers for the past few days, against Leo DeRocher, his mortal enemy. Single at home. Western swings, cracks a hard curving liner into the upper deck foul. Uh, Western, 247 hitter, Sal Magley on deck. The fellow Western, fine defensive catcher, made in 680 chances last year. One low throw, just one error. A 999 record for the highest average ever recorded, fielding wise, in the National League. Very good catcher, going out well on pop flies, gets out well for butt, gets a long ball occasionally. The Giants, in their previous second inning, had a golden moment. Lockman singled. Thompson followed with a slashing single to left. But then, shades of Babe Herman raced into second base with Lockman already on the bag. The pitch by Newcomb arched in high inside. High, high. In that Dodger game so many years ago, it was Babe Herman, Dazzy Vance, and Chick Huster on third base all at one and the same time. Herman and Vance slid into third base, and the Babe passed Chick Huster on the way. Here's the pitch. Taken high inside by the right-hand hitter, Wes Western. Very high inside. Well, we told you when this ball game started that heroes would be made and goats would be born to be talked about down through the years here at the Polo Grounds this afternoon, and we may have had a famous repetition of the Fred Merkel incident here today. Don Newcomb throws and misses inside. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff count on Western leading off the third inning. Yes, so you'll remember. Back in, uh, I think it was 1912, when Freddie Merkel, a bonehead fame, and Fred Smacker, an infield must fly, crossed the chance for the uh, World Championship. Western takes all four outside as well. And it might be this afternoon that Bobby Thompson, Clay, or else whoever was responsible for it, would be joined alongside that. Sal Magley will now be the batter. You see, 
Westrom would have been up in the second inning had there not been the skull on the part of the Giants as far as base running is concerned. They would have had two on and one out with an opportunity for both Mays and Westrom. You see now, Westrom has walked. Magley, the batter, smiling Salvador. The infield charges in as he is expected to bunt, and he doesn't. It is strike one call down the middle of it. Sal Magley batting for the New York Giants. The Giants have had the best National League pitching, and a lot of it can be traced right home to Sal Magley. He was the league's winningest last year, that is in 50, with 18-4. and four. Second only to Jim Hearn in earned run average with 271. 111 drains straight at the close of last season. Infield in again. The pitch to Magley is trying to bunt. It's high, though. One and one. One ball and one strike. To show you what kind of a pitcher Sal Magley is under fire, how good a pitcher he is, last year he worked at one time 45 scoreless innings, missing Carl Hubble's record by one in the third innings. He has a curve that Kiner and Musial even think is the sharpest in the National League. Here's Cox almost halfway in. Hodges rushes in. Magley punts. Foul. One ball and two strikes. Giant hopes looking right at the moment. Dark is the inside of an ink well. They trail one to nothing. It's early in the ball game. Niagara Falls Nuggets, Sal Magley, with 13 savvy years of campaigning on his shoulders. Riding the National League pennant for the Giants today. It's on the broad back of Don Newcomb for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Ace against ace. So, for all these crippled, ailing pitching staff, as I remarked, somehow dressing at DeRocher were able to muster two 20-game winners for this game today. Newcomb throws to first, not in time. Westrom gets back over there. It's all on the line. Either team has the magic number one today. Got Red Webb. 
And Sankey, feet close together, well away from the plate. Choke hitting right hand to the outfield, shaded to the left, the infield pull to the left. Reeves, halfway up, stride toward third. There's the ball, hit fair down the third base side. Back to back, close to second, one to throw first. Yesterday, Sal would have been wasted. The pitch, half-off, and misses. 
That's strike that swing. Two up and two down. A lot of people have said that Leo should have started Magley yesterday. But it would have been a total waste of Leo's first-line pitcher because against Levine yesterday, not even Walter Johnson at his best could have helped the Giants left. They'd have just been wasting Magley against a kid throwing a shutout. Magley or anybody else wouldn't have beaten LeBron yesterday. Now as it is, he's at least got a fairly well-rested ace ready for this biggest game of the year. Magley was tight yesterday, said he wasn't ready. Even Dresden said he would have done the same thing that DeRocher had done. The pitch. That's one cut out of miss for the right-handed hitter. Hodges going around for it. Out on the mound, Sal Magley, who has had three days of rest, and that's generally enough for him. Don Newcomb had five and two-thirds innings of pitching on Sunday. The pitch. And he missed again on a weak swing by Hodges, who tried to ignore the pitch at the last moment for the two far through on his swing. Catching today for the Dodgers is Rube Walker, who had three hits there yesterday, and was subbing for Roy Campanella. Campanella pulled a hamstring muscle in his right leg. He's taking a freezing spray rather than injection, but they're not deadening the pain, Roy says. Two out, Hodges at bat. Two strikes on the big ball. Magley throws it down. Gill beats the weak roller down to the third baseman. Thompson freezes it. Arches his throw. He's got it coming up. Five to three. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base in the first half of the fourth inning. And Sal Magley settling down now to the brilliance which we are accustomed to seeing in Magley has retired 11 batters in a row since Jackie Robinson hit his one-run single with one out in the first inning. Magley has been airtight, freezer compartment tight. Since he opened in the first inning and allowed Robinson to hit him and uh, reach the run. We'll go into the last of the fourth now. The Giants will have up the fat part of their batting list. Alvin Brock, Don Mueller, and Whitey Lockman. We'll pause now. 45 seconds. The score is the Brooklyn Dodgers won the New York Giants nothing. Well, it would be very hard to guess on the play on Bobby Thompson the second inning skull on the part of the New York Giants as to who fouled it up because from where our press box is you simply could not tell whether Bobby got the sign to go on down to second or went on down to second on his own but certainly the fault will either rest with Bobby Thompson or with Freddie Fitzsimmons or Leo DeRocher, one of those three Doc 304 hitter Luke up on the hill, Al Walker down behind the plate, Al waits for the pitch Popped out the third on a first pitch, first out of the first inning. He takes a ball one over there. In 1948, Alvin Dark fired the Boston Braves to a pennant. By natural temperament, he is a leader. Former lieutenant in the Marines, Newcomb offers. Dark swings, rifles the drive, slug foul down the third baseline, whistling over the head of Larry Getz, who worked balls and strikes here yesterday. And in again, after tapping mud off his spikes, comes Alvin Dark, one of the greatest all-around athletes in Louisiana State University history. They still talk about his work for Louisiana State University against Fordham. And by the way, Liberty is this afternoon making arrangements to bring you, this Saturday night, the game between the undefeated Bengals of Louisiana State and the Rice Institute Owls. Newcomb pitches. Alvin Dark swings, pops one high into the air. Jackie Robinson drifts back on the grass. Getting under it, waiting. He's got it. Jackie Robinson swallowing a high pop-up from Alvin Dark, who leads off the fourth inning. And Newcomb, aside from a bad second inning, is also settling down. There have been three hits. Two off Newcomb, one off Sal Magley. Now comes Don Mueller, Mandrake. A power-hitting left-hander who has the wind in his favor, blowing out a crosswind toward right. From left to right. Third baseman is up close. Reese halfway up. Robinson deep on the right side as Mueller looks at one. Pumped outside by Don Newcomb. Big giant right-hander. Newcomb on the hill. Louisiana State and uh, Rice being set up to broadcast for you on Saturday night. Liberty has six football games a weekend. Remember to stay tuned in to your Liberty stations for LBS, a large funnel of sports. Newcomb throws in too close. Ball two. One out. Mueller batting. Don kicks and fires. Mueller swings out the line. Don Hopkins goes high into the air with a leaping touch. Down the first baseline, a sizzling 
searing water that Gil Hodges left his feet for and brought down with a jack-in-the-box catch. He came way high in the air as though he had coils of springs in his feet. Now here's Marty Irvin, leading run started hitter in the National League. Left to right-hand hitter. The outfield stands far to the left. Infield toward third. Newcomb throws him down, and Irvin looks it over. Time wide for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Pervasive gloom and depression over the pole grounds, Rooters. Dodgers fans wild with enthusiasm in the desperate fighting at Tugan's bluff. Newcomb kicks. Big right-hander overarms it. Marty Irvin moves back away from the tin high pitch. Another dramatic page in Polo Brown's history. Irvin with two out. The base is empty. Is batting. Robinson over near second. Reese halfway between short, between third and second. The Giants in the Valley of the Shadow trailing one to nothing. Last of the fourth inning. Newcomb throwing down. Irvin takes it upstairs. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. These two teams struggling down through the year. Blazing, shining, stumbling, faltering, blazing, shining again. Finally coming down here to the last day when only one game matters. When you can forget everything else, this is the only one we're starting all over. Newcomb pitches, Urban swings, hopping ball down to Cox, who freezes it, throws, in time for the out of first. No run, no hit, no errors, nobody left on. And we are at the end of four quick one-hour innings in the polo grounds. Going into the fifth inning here at the PG in New York, site of baseball's first third game of a playoff, the score is the Brooklyn Dodgers won, the New York Giants nothing. Brooklyn one run, one hit, no errors, two left on. The New York Giants no runs, two second inning singles, backed up by Lockman and Thompson, no errors, and one man left on base. And now out comes the leadoff Brooklyn batter, Billy Cox, who made a fine, fine stop to start a double play on Eddie Stanky with Don Newcomb about to get in trouble in the third inning. Well, there have been three interesting points in this game so far. Magley's slight nervousness at the start. That's just an assumption on my part, since I have no way of knowing. But he did appear that for the first time since I, in uh, all the times I've ever seen him, he might be just the slightest bit of Twitter. He missed the corners on Reese, walked him with one away. Snyder was also walked, and then Robinson singled. That brought home a run. Then in the Giants inning, Bobby Thompson. There's a pitch, but along the first base line by Cox. He'll have to go, and Magley picks up the ball, shoots one, throw to first, that hits Cox on the leg. And that's the second time that a ball has hit a runner here in two days. They're going to call him out at first base. Or, uh, uh, they're going to call it safe at first base on a hit. Hit at first base. Yesterday, when Magley threw to first base, he hit Gil, or when uh, Sheldon Jones threw to first, he hit Hodges in the small of the back. And here now, Magley hits Billy Cox, who beats out a leadoff blunt hit. George Spencer it was Spencer who hit uh, Hodges yesterday, and not Jones. A left-hand hitter at the plate, Rube Walker. Magley tugs at his cap. Shoeless Joe Jackson hit the first homer over the right field roof here. Rube Walker duplicated it yesterday afternoon. There's a swing and a miss. The monumental Titanic homer that Walker hit yesterday. Joe Jackson was the first ever to do it. Shoeless Joe, smothering pressure on the New York Giants. We pause for station identification five seconds. We'll do it after this next pitch. Magley taking the sign now. New York Giant right-hander looks to his runner at first. Cox throws down, cut out and missed for strike two. Now five seconds to play that this is Liberty. Back at baseball, where the polo grounds in that Battle of Coogan's Bluff on the black, swirling waters of the Harlem River, the New York Giants facing the roused Brooklyn Dodgers that has come back from the Valley of the Shadow. Won yesterday 10-0, leads today by a score of 1-0. The light's shining, but the heavens overhead are brightening up all the time. Al Walker, the batter, Magley offers. Al swings and misses. 
for strike three. For Magley, the barber has now recorded five strikeouts in his first five innings. The batter will be Newcomb with Cox on first, Alvin Dark and Eddie Stanky in double play that. Around us, the Flatbush faithful, 25,000 of them, ooing and eyeing at their high tide of devotion and pride. Idol of battle in the National League, which has been for so many weeks ebbing and then falling. A moment victory in sight. The next moment, disaster at hand. Finally down to the last game where nothing else matters. Magley checks Cox. Bunning at it is uh, Newcomb. Starts that gets away from him. Goes for strike one. And holding on at first base as Western is able to retrieve the ball in time is the runner, Billy Cox. Would you call this a cold war? A war of nerves? That's certainly one way of putting it. Out on the mound, inscrutable Sal Magley. His face, an unreadable blank. A man of no nerves, an old outlaw campaigner at Drummondville and at Tampico, brought back from the Mexican leagues by Chandler's amnesty. Magley offers, they charge in for the bunt. It escapes uh, Wes Westham as Newcomb fouls it off, beats his bat into the ground in disgust. Big Don from Leonia, New Jersey, six feet four, 220 pounder. Mrs. John McGraw on hand. Ford Frick, new commissioner, Warren Giles, the new president of the National League, William Harridge, president of the American League, uh, Joey Lewis, Douglas, and Mrs. MacArthur, many, many others, a who's who here this afternoon, in earnest, Dizzy Dean is here, he'll be heard nationally for the first time next year, the old cardinal pitcher, you know, Dizzy has reached the uh, metallic age, gold in his teeth, silver in his hair, lead in his feet, still around though. Magley throwing Newcomb. Don takes left-hand batter. Wide, ball one, one and two. After trying to bunt twice and going to strikes both times. Tommy Holmes here, the manager of the Boston Braves, sitting behind the post. No doubt arranged by Harold Parrott of the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> Good inning pitcher, Don. Swings at the wrap to the right side. Beautiful backhand at the locker room. Throws in time to dark for a force out at second base. That was a fine fielding play by one of the game's great natural fielders, Whitey Lockman, transplanted outfielder who raced to his right on the rim of the infield grass, took a bounding hopper from Don Newcomb, who gets first on a fielder's choice, and then, looking to first base, saw that he could only make a play for fourth and second base and got Cox there. Lockman to dark, three to six. Now the Giants have Newcomb on first, two away, and the batter is Carl Ferrillo. The New York Giants lead this ball game by a sc- or a trail this ball game one to nothing with two out. Ferrillo batting. That hit off Magley, by the way, broke a skein of 11 straight batters retired. Magley has now retired 13 out of the last 14 men who have faced him. <clears throat> Ferrillo, right hand hitter. Third time in four days, the Dodgers trying to avoid it. Magley throws it down. Cold-hearted Sal's curveball is hit out toward left field. Weak drooping liner in fast as Irvin gets there and makes the catch for the out. On a good racing catch, he was laid way back for a full inning right-hander. Way back toward the wall at a country mile. Put on a full head of steam and uh, came roaring in to get it. The Dodgers, despite a leadoff base hit by Billy Cox, go down with no runs, one hit, no errors. And they left one man racing his motor down at first base. At the end of four and a half innings of play, here in the Polo Grounds in New York, the Brooklyn Dodgers won the New York Giants zero. Folks, you'll get deep down satisfaction with premium quality Falstaff. A true premium quality beer. Only premium quality hops and grains are ever used. Take a sip of Falstaff, taste it, and you'll say... All staff's got something. Fans, it's got something for you. A famous flavor for your extra pleasure. Top baseball entertainment for your extra enjoyment. Brewed by the Fall Staff Brewing Corporation of St. Louis, Omaha, and New Orleans. Right now, you can be adding plenty to your enjoyment of this game. By just uh, taking the wraps off a bottle, Frosty Fall Staff. Or, better still, if you don't have any on hand, make it a point. Once the ball game is over, we won't ask you to do it during the game. 
Get in the jalopy, go down and buy a case of Falstaff, which is premium quality through and through. It's got something. Falstaff, choices product of the brewer's art. Falstaff, the beer that brings you baseball. Relative to the auctioning of the baseballs of last Saturday and the Sunday at Braves Field in Boston, we have now good news for you. We're going to be able to supply an autographed baseball for every person who sends in a check covering his bid, the amount of which is known to all of you. Make the check payable to the Jimmy Fund, care of the Boston Braves, Braves Field, Boston, Massachusetts. So everybody that bid by sending in a check for the amount of his bid can get uh, a ball actually uh, used in the game on Saturday. That is, uh, the first ten people will get balls actually used. We could, got all the balls we could that we used in the games, and then the rest of those people, the rest after the first ten, will get balls which are autographed by the New York Giants and the Boston Braves. So send in uh, your check, Jimmy Fun, care of the Boston Braves, Braves Field in Boston, and then uh, you'll get your baseball. Whitey Lockman leads off. Wonder what's going on in Leo's head. Last half of the fifth inning. Drama everywhere. String is run out in the National League. Newcomb rocks the big right hander. Brings it down. Lays in a strike off the letters. Strike one. Snyder and Hodges seem to have been coming out of their slumps yesterday. Robinson says the Duke hadn't been swinging right and was yesterday for the first time. Pitch. Giving ground on it is Whitey Lockman. Ball one. One and one. Giants trying to get a runner on here. Get something started if they can. Lockman like Mel out. Was a polo grounds figure before he was 20. Everybody thought he was through after a multiple ankle fracture in 47. Back he came to the headlines. Take strike ball. Outside corner whistling curve. Carol Whitey Lockman from Charlotte, North Carolina. The Warhawks. Facing Big Don Newcomb, the giant right-hander of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Tommy Holmes' family being threatened. He lives in the Bay Ridge section of Brooklyn. Brooklyn fans threatening him for having knocked the Dodgers almost out of the pennant race last year. Lockman hits a whistling ground ball. That's a nasty hot reach. Stop slow, Don. Fools you now. Well, let's see we read the playing in the last couple of days. The fine defensive ball, as you'll ever see a shortstop play. There was a wicked one-hopper hit to him. Sliced viciously off the bat of left-hand hitting Whitey Lockman. Veering to the left side on a mile-a-minute clip. It took a nasty kick, English up high, almost over Reese's head. But with a sudden, almost automatic motion, Reese jerked his glove hand up. Seemed to have a perception that the ball was going to do that. Pulled it down and threw him out. Frank warms in the Dodger bullpen. Newcomb throws. Tops the swing. Gets a grander inside third base. Bad territory. Here's Bobby around first. Whistling for second base. He had thrown a second. He dies. Emerald Kelly Buster. Straight for a double. Bobby Thompson, who was no doubt being blamed for a Babe Herman skull in the second inning by many fans, when it may or may not have been the fault of the New York Giant coaches, redeems himself to glory in the hearts of the New York Giant fans with a sizzling one-foot there third baseline double out along the left field line inside Bill Cox, who, as good a glove man as he is, couldn't get that one with a dive at it. Thompson streaked in the second and hit a belly whopper slide in front of Jackie Robinson's tag, which was put on his head as he came in. Not in time. Thompson had his arms spread out, and he went off in the second base just like you'd go off a diving board, belly busting in. He's in there, scoring position at second. The batter is Willie Mays. One out. The Dodgers lead by a score of one to nothing in the sudden death finale. Curtain call in the National League. John Newcomb looks down, checking Bobby at second base. The pitch to Willie is high inside for ball one. Now both Franca and Erskine are up heating up in the Dodger bullpen. The giant hurlers have sat down. Magley appears in complete control now. Newcomb's pitch to the right-hander. Willie cuts and fouls up a printing fast pitch. He had Willie swinging late on that one. Such was the velocity with which Newcomb threw that one in. That had smoke all over it. Yesterday, Charlie Dressen and the Dodgers brought to mind a great incident. That Dodger pitching staff exhausted and riddled their most valuable player, Campanella, out of the lineup. Just one defeat away. 
pitching worn down to a nap. Hitters and fielders weary beyond their years. And uh, he brought to mind a great adage. Newcomb throws where Mays cuts and fouls it off at his feet. Roy Campanella was crippled. The whole club was decimated. Uh, so Charlie Dressen reminded of that historic statement of Marshal Foch, the commander of the Allied forces in the First World War. You remember then, when things were at their worst, the Marshal put down in his order, he said, my center is giving away, my right is pushed back, my left is wavering. The situation is excellent, I shall attack. So he did, and under the same birth ball circumstances, so has Dresden yesterday and today. Newcomb in tough shape, with Thompson down at second, one out. Reese and Robinson bluffing him back to the bag. May Now out trots Dresden to talk to Don Newcomb about how he's going to pitch to West Westrom, the batter coming up. Maybe perhaps to tell him that they want to walk Westrom and get to Magley. The strategy on this one will be forthcoming immediately. Newcomb will pitch five and two-thirds innings Sunday, being relieved in the 13th with two on and two out. Had brilliant fielding. They had but one hit off of him, but he walked six. He was out there to battle Robin Roberts and save the Brooklyn Dodger pennant. He, like Rowe, has been complaining of a sore arm. Rowe, you know, who, if the Dodgers win this one, may or may not start the first game of the World Series tomorrow, didn't survive the second inning with two days rest. They're going to walk Westrom. That was what Dresden was going out to tell Newcomb. They're walking Westrom in order to get to Magley, knowing that the Giants cannot afford to relieve Smiling Sal, the Niagara Falls Nugget. Sal Magley with 23 and 6 being walked about uh, will uh, be the next batter as Magley hitting 155 will come up the moment Westrom has walked. Here's a uh, Newcomb turns around making Bobby Thompson hustle back into second base after the 3 nothing pitch out. Magley had a base hit up in Boston on Saturday. It was a very valuable blow on his own behalf. And now they're telling Leo DeRocha to get back in the coaching box at third base. He's out of it. He's still standing on the edge, though, and now Leo DeRocher, after the ball four is pitched, is coming down the line in order to talk to Sal Magley. Western walk, Giant has a tying run at second base, the go-ahead run on first base with Magley, the barber, hitting. Sal has lathered the Brooks five out of six times this season. Five out of six. Carl Erskine, who was warming in the bullpen, went the route for Brooklyn on Friday night. This is Newcomb's third call in five days, his fourth call in eight days. He is five and two against the New York Giants this season, nothing and one to Sal Magley. Magley is five and one against the Brooklyn Dodgers. They've beaten him but once. Giants playing on the same field for more than 60 years. Magley the batter. Newcomb pitches. Sal swings at the dribbling grounder down to Reese. who eats it up, throws to first. He got him in the first out of the jam. They beat the rap. Six to three. Magley had a slow, hopping grounder. A skipper of two hops down to Reese, who trapped the ball on the half hop. Came up. Sizzled it to Hodges for the out. No runs, one hit, no errors, two men left on base. And now, moving into the sixth inning here at the Polo Grounds in New York, as time grows short for the desperately reaching Giants, the score is the Brooklyn Dodgers won, the New York Giants nothing. Well, if you could write the script for this one, how would you write it? If you were a Hollywood writer and say, Dory Sherry, the director of production of Metro Golden Mayor, came to you and said, write me a script for a great baseball picture. I want it to be the most thrilling baseball picture that you can imagine. What would you write? Why bother? Why not just copy the 1951 National League race? Wouldn't that be better than anyone, the most, anything, the most imaginative scenario writer could possibly drum up? I'm sure it would. This is the end of plots. Well, out goes Magley for the Giants, trying to turn back the Dodgers another time. The main Giants came from the 1883 Giant team. They were very big men there in the Twilight Gaslight era. The first Giant manager, Jim Mutry, 
Roared out at the big fellas one day. Come on, you giants. And from that time on, they were giants. Reese striding takes bank call on the outside corner. We did scoreboard will follow the game. That fellow Jim Mutry won the first two giant penalties. Bill Terry won three and John McGraw 15. Magley arches his back. Roll strike two called over the outside corner. Sal, but for that first inning, laps in control. And it may have been a fatal error. Has been superb. Masterful. Perfect. My regards to my good friend Robert Lee out in Los Angeles. Magley throws. Pee Wee Reese takes a shade outside. One and two. First waste pitch from Magley. I bet most of you didn't know that the spawning grounds of these Brooklyn Dodgers, the borough of Brooklyn, is as big as Chicago. 88 and 8 tenths square miles. 2,800,000 people. Magley works down to the right-hander and Reese watches strike three. It's on the outside corner. Brilliant curveball, broken off, swept across the outside corner as Pee Wee just stood there with an open mouth uh, face. Over here from beautiful Senate Brooklyn, 25,000 madly roaring looters. That name of Brooklyn came from Breukelen, spelled B-R-E-U-C-K-E-L-E-N. It's from Netherlands Village, and it means broken land. Dodgers today are in one piece, though, still, miraculously. There's a swing and a drive, left field way, hustling over for it is Irvin, but this will be in for a Dodger base hit. Snyder rounds first base, and will come back in as Snyder makes, and Irvin makes his play back to second. It's a Dodger base hit. They run on with one away, and Jackie Robinson is again the batter. So here is the Dodger hatchet man, Jackie Robinson, and some of the Giant fans booing. Booing Robinson is as dangerous as hunting a gas leak with a match. He responds to it. Something in his chemistry that won't take it. The outfield off to the left side. Infield in double play depth. Sal Magley on the hill. Freezes it outside for ball one. One out, one on. The one up is Jackie Robinson. Hitting right now. Smile and Sal Magley, the batter, has yielded three hits this ball game. Trails at one nothing with a pennant squarely on the line. Magley into the windup now. Comes down with a pitch. Taken outside. Speaking of the birds being on the field, Red Smith made a great remark in his column today when he said there were birds on the field here yesterday. They always left behind the pitcher Levine. Because they knew the Giants were at bat and they were safe. Levine's got him out 10 nothing yesterday in a brilliant rookie exhibition. One on, one out. The batter is Robinson. Two balls on him. He's got to lay it in. Throws high outside. Pitch out to run on his way to second. The throw there. He is out the field. Snyder streaks for second on a pitch out. The Giants have to steal dope. Precious that it was going to take place. And Westrom, who made two great takes to second base the day before yesterday in the opening game of the series to snuff out prospective Dodger runners with it lofty in their hearts. Makes the third one here today. And on Jackie Robinson, two to four is the out. Robbie swings, hits the liner up along the left field line, which goes way foul. It was hit hard enough and far enough for a home run, but was not in there. The big pitch here yesterday was a low sweeping curve on which Bobby Thompson struck out in the third with the bases full. After that, you knew that Lafayne was going to ride that lead home. It was a bad pitch, by the way. You'll remember it. Bases full, Thompson up, three and two pitch. If Thompson had let it go by, it would have been a base on balls and a run walked in. Even LeBron admitted that. The pitch taken inside, and Jackie Robinson's on first with two away. Now they've got to watch him very closely because Robinson is one of baseball's most accomplished stealers. With Andy Papko up here, he'd like to go to second in scoring position. Photographers were busy taking picture of the Robinsons, Jackie and Sugar Ray, before the ball game to show you the feeling that is existent in this National League clutch playoff. Just before the ball game, they were ministering to Eddie Stanky on a rubbing table in the Giants' dressing room. He was spiked by Jethro in Boston in the weekend series. Spiked himself going down to first base yesterday. He's got his feet tangled up. He had two nasty gashes on his shin bone. I asked Eddie, I said, Eddie, you going to be able to play today? He just looked down at his leg and he said, is it broken? The outfield, deep off to the left, fanned the way. Jackie Robinson at first base, leading, dancing down the line, trying to nettle Magley. Sal checks his runner. Cold-blooded, unemotional Sal. Papco backs out of the batter's box. 
Bagley keeping a close watch on Jackie Robinson, trying to keep the short hold on him, realizing that Robinson will do anything to get down to second base. And is an accomplished stealer. Bagley checks Robinson now. Throws down to the batter. Half goes swings. Pumps a fly up along the left field line. Foul. It's going toward the upper deck and will go up on top out of play. People in the bat formed the impression up to yesterday that the Giants could not lose. When they did lose yesterday, it was a butte. Ten to nothing. They were long overdue, though. Some of the Giants supporters around this morning very worried for fear the Giants' luck had at long last run out. One to nothing in favor of the Brooklyn Dodgers on a first inning single to left by Jack Robinson scoring Reese, who had walked in front from second base. Mackley checks Robinson at first base. Sal looking over there, Jackie jockeying back and forth. Magley finally unnerved, throws to first base. Not in time. There was a cat and mouse game between Jackie Robinson jiggling back and forth up and down, jumping in that peculiar ballet dance motion of his to rattle a pitcher. Finally, Magley, unable to bear the pressure through to first base, delivers to the batter again. Swung on and missed by Pastro for strike two. Uh, he went out for an outside pitch that time, down low. At the plate, Andy Papko, his confederate, Jackie Robinson on first base. Button bright light shining above. Cool, murky afternoon overhead, but lightening up as the afternoon wears on. People shedding their coats. A lot of shirt sleeve fans sitting below us in the stands. Cram packed. Robinson, the Dodger hatchet man at first. Half goes swing. Skies went up into the air. Coming down the line is Whitey Lock, but he waits, waits. He's got it. The side is retired for Brooklyn in the sixth inning. As Sal Magley once again survives the onslaught and gets past him with no run, one hit. The Dodgers third at this sixth inning ball game. No errors and one left on. At the end of five and one half innings here at the Polo Grounds in New York, the Brooklyn Dodgers won the New York Giants. Nothing. Brooklyn, one run. Three hits, no errors, four men left on base. The New York Giants, no runs, three hits, no errors, and three men left on base. Here's Eddie Stanky to lead off with Alvin Dock to follow and Don Mueller down in the hole as the last half of the sixth inning will get underway. There are reports that Hornsby and O'Doul have been approached for Charlie Dresden's job, but everybody close to Dodger management deny that. That's just one of the many rumors that goes around. Light still shining, tons of hot dogs, coffee, and peanuts being consumed. Hank Greenberg, Joe Cronin, Bucky Walters, Sam Lingo, Mungo, Luke Sewell, Billy Sullivan, Miss Dan Topping, Miss John McGraw, Dolly Stock, all here. Right-hand hitter Eddie Stanky, the Pratt leading off for the New York Giants. Last of the six, and Eddie would like to draw a face on balls here, which is his major weapon of attack. He starts the ball rolling, a pot balling, and Don Lucan throws, and Stanky swings up, dying quail down the left field line. Speeding in for a tackle, runs, runs, he's got it. Stanky in a little short blooper, one of those handle hits, leaping lean liner in the hole or over the hole between Cox and Reese in the short left field. And the Papco racing in, reached up, hauled it in for the out, and Stanky is away in the last half of the sixth inning. In case you're looking down the line, Newcomb has 11 outs to go. Alvin Dark is the batter, former great Louisiana State University athlete, and this network, as I've told you, is making arrangements with one of the best sportscasters in the nation, Lindsey Nelson, to bring you play-by-play the LSU Rice game this Saturday night. Both teams are undefeated. Frank and Erskine warming up again. Dark reaches, takes strike call. Nothing in one. Alvin Dark batting from Lake Charles, Louisiana, number 19. Say, how would you write a lead on this game? How would you write a lead? What would you say to encompass the drama of this game in one paragraph? The pitch outside. I remember the greatest lead I ever read was one written by Damon Runyon. He sat out one day. A little fella had confessed on the stand inadvertently, and he sat out and wrote that a little man sat on a little chair in a little courthouse today and quietly talked himself to death. There's a foul ball hit up into the stand, foul from Dark to the left side, well out of play. Dark banging one down the left field line, which twisted foul. I 
Bradley hit a fan along first base with a Coke bottle from the upper stand a moment ago. He could have got 10 points for that. Look him down, too high on dark for a 2 2 count with one away. The Giants, desperate, struggling for breath in the National League. One to nothing behind here. Brooklyn won, the New York Giants, nothing. Last half of the sixth inning. Now Don Newcomb into the windup. The giant right-hander cuts it down, planks it in, dark swing, this one off the hole. No, I got my clock across the first game. Hey, hey, hey. 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 So the great Billy Cox, playing great ball, makes the second save of the afternoon. He got Sankey in the third inning on a double play stop inside the third baseline. Here he does it again to Alvin Dark to make a second out in the sixth inning. And now, with two away, Don Mueller is going to be the batter. He swings, hits one down the first baseline, foul, and it bounces towards the stands and out of play. The Dodgers written off three times the National League, not yet dead. Then out, Mueller batting. One to nothing in favor of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Magley throwing the game this life, but so is Newcomb. Tennant riding with every pitch, and both these two teams. Mueller will be swinging for that fence, I imagine, with two away. The strategy here would be to swing for a long ball. Greatest of all the National League pennant races has now been carried just as far as it can go. Each time, each team has saved its best bib and chucker for this last game. The Sun trying to come out with the lights on. The pitch inside. Two and one. Two balls. One strike. Magley was 4 and nothing against the Brooks last year, 5 and 0 this year. Nuke is 4 and 3 against the Giants last year, 5 and 2 in this year. He's been beaten two out of his last three times out against the New York Giants, but today he is superb. Levine yesterday, no hit at the Giants the last five innings, so you can look and say that in the last ten innings, the Giants have only had three hits off Brooklyn pitching. Newcomb works, delivering. Mueller swings, left the pop up to the right side. Coming over for it is first baseman Hodges. Under it, waiting. He's got it for the out. And will Don Newcomb be able to ride that first inning Robinson single home to victory in the National League? That becomes the burning question of the moment. More flaming as the minutes wear on. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We'll go into the seventh. The seventh. Lucky for one of the two teams, perhaps, at the polo class with the score Brooklyn 1, the New York Giants, nothing. Well, Dresden just asked Neil how he felt, and we could see Don said not in the affirmative. Magley goes out to the hill with a 4 0 record against the Bra- Brooks last year, 5 and 1 this year, trailing 1 to nothing on a first inning based on balls to Reese. One following the Snyder and Jackie Robinson's electrifying single in the hole. Seventh inning of play, 40 home runs for the fellow up here. It's Gil Hodges, 270 hitter, outfield, very deep, very much to the left. Magley twists the curveball too wide. One ball and no strikes. Down catching him. Wes Westrom catching the sap moon for Brooks. Al Walker, whose performance for Campanello needs no apology. Spring has run out. Magley against Newcomb. Foul works. Hodges swings and it's Nick Foul back in the screen. Boy, the wondrous terms of endearment that must be going on between these two teams down there on the field with $5,000 riding on the line for each player. We pause five seconds. This is the Liberty Broadcasting System. Back it is to the Polo Grounds, New York, with Liberty's game of the day, the final game of the day this year, because it can't go any further. They'll play all night to get this one over. Sal Magley kicks, throws, Hodges swings, lets the tall towering pop up a weak soft drink fly back at home. Weston tight roping under it, boxes it in. One up and one down as Hodges pops to the catcher, and it is Billy Cox come on coming up now to see if he can write another page in his exploit book for this afternoon. He has made two fine fielding plays for the Brooklyn Dodgers, and along with Pee Wee Reese, has been the big fielding gun. Let's listen to the applause for him. Here is Cox, who with Robinson has been the Dodger hatchet man today. He takes one inside. Well, Robinson single. Bobby Thompson race into second base with the base already occupied. The base on balls to Reese. The great stops by Cox and Reese. They are the highlights today. Billy takes ball two outside. Two balls, no strikes. Two and nothing. String running out. Sands of time running down the National League race. Billy Cox takes inside. Three balls, no strikes, one out. 
Cox the hitter, a good glove man. Bill Cox, number three, right hand hitter. Rowe, if he should go in the World Series tomorrow, if the Dodgers should win, which is a long presumption, has still a sore arm. Here's a strike over there for a 3 1 count. He's got sore in Philly. He needs much more rest than he's been getting. This is one of those grimy New York afternoons. Dirty, wash, water, gray clouds above. Clearing up a little. Magley's 3 1 ball. Down the heart for a call strike. Right down the pipe. Sal Magley, the unsmiling, unflinching giant hero of 23 victories on the mound for the Polo Grounders this afternoon. Great will be the rejoicing in Flatbush if Newcomb can ride it through, but Magley is down and in with a 3-2 pitch hit down at the shortstop. Over his dark in perfect position, throws weakly the first in time for the out. That was almost a weak throw, but Dark looping it was right on the money with it. Two up and two down. The batter will be left-hand hitting Rube Walker, who unleashed a monumental over-the-right-field upper deck home run here yesterday to match the exploit of Shoeless Joe Jackson low those many years ago. The barber still shaving with two away in the seventh inning, trailing one to nothing. Blackwater to the Harlem River, back of the center field fence as Magley comes down through the murk with a ball one wide. One ball, no strike. Well, nothing has short-circuited this electric tension here today. Down at second, the cameo size second baseman. Spanky calling to Magley, who throws. Ball two, the strike one over the outside corner. That caught it. One Dodger fan walked up to the bleacher line about 10 this morning, almost hidden by a five-foot-high funeral piece of dahlias and gladiolas. It was draped in a black ribbon, lettered in gold, was the sentiment, sympathy to the Giants. Magley throws, high and wide, ball two, two and one. Uh, two balls, one strike. Quick sand finale. One wrong step and down you go for keeps. The York and Brooklyn tied 97 wins and 59 losses apiece. Lights on. Magley looking down. Magic number for either team now one. The batter with two away. Left-hander Rube Walker who swings. Hits a bounding foul down past the first base coach Jake Timber up against the stands and out of play. Out beyond out of play. So the New York Giants here. Battling, embattled, beleaguered, one to nothing behind. The first half of the seventh inning, the Giants will be up in the last half of the seventh inning. A tough ball game for both these pitchers. It'll be a heartbreaker for anybody who loses this one. Dodgers at the moment look happy as a pair of fleas in the dog pound. Two and two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Rube Walker, the batter. Right hand is pitch. Walker cuts this one in the hole. And Johnny Marshall goes racing over for it, but can't reach it. And round first as fast as a prairie schooner pulled by a gopher. Goes Rube Walker. Don Newcomb is the batter now. Newcomb, the Dodgers' money winner, top flinger, huge man, hard worker, and a strikeout pitcher is up from Madison, New Jersey. Good hitting pitcher who often works in the bullpen between games, between starts. All star star of 49 and 50. Six feet four, 220 pounds, left hand hitter done. Catcher Westrum down in catching position now. The outfield is short. In the polo grounds, every batter is a home run threat with the short fences. Magley works it down. Newcomb hits a sharp sparkler down in. He bottles it up, throws weakly in time to first base. That's all he has to do because Newcomb has given it up, rushing down the line. And they're booing God as he walks back to the pitching mound right now because he didn't run that one out. Thank you, bottled, But he even had Don Bennett full tilt. He could not possibly have beat it to first base. Four to three. That's the out. Thank you to lock them. No runs. One person bingo. Lance to right by Rube Walker. No errors. And Rube left spinning his wheels at first. Now, as we go down, 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 toward the final moment. The tip. The limit. The last jagged edge of the National League race. The score is one for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Nothing for the New York Giants. Here's the right hand of Newcomb facing... Cleanup hitter Marty Irvin, giant fans, applauding for a rally, clapping. Hopefully, Marty Irvin crashes. Newcomb feeds, heeled off for a strike on the hip. 
Monty Irvin originally an outfit with a play a lot of first base for the Giants. Now back in left, lots of power, 6'1", 195 pounds. Leading run batted in with the New York Giants, for that matter, in the National League also. A double dive, deep dish, Doozer in the pole, grabs Irvin, swings that line, and over left the line, pass up, comes over, it's off the wall, now Cal plays it, Irvin around first, three from second, it's going to be close to the throw, here's a wide throw, and Jackie Rupp saves a diving stop a second to keep it from going to three bases. Newcomb is a good pitcher under fire. Don't underestimate him. 
You remember down in Philadelphia when he had the bases full. A tough man at bat. And the count. Three and one on the hitter. And still got out of it. Newcomb kicks, throws, counts and swings, and lifts the pop up to the left out of play. Coming up on top of our Liberty Broadcasting System booth, Powell. It's Irvin at third with a tying run. Whitey Lockman's at first. The infield is pulled in to play for the play at the plate. They want to cut off that winning run or the tying run. Irvin at third base. The outfield is very deep to the left. Crowd caught with suspense. Black shadow of calamity hanging over the Brooklyn Dodgers. The Brooklyn high tide of battle. 13 and a half games long since gone. Down Dormy 1 in the National League. The magic number 1 for either team. All right. Blank in the blue now, Bob. Lightning up overhead. Newcomb offers. Up, swings that long drive. He's out of left field on the plate. Home the run. Back goes Snyder. He's under it, waiting. Irvin is tagged up. Here he comes into the plate. And it's a 1-1 tie in New York. Session out on the mound. 
West come out to talk to Magley. Here comes Alvin Dark, the Giants team captain in also. Umpires, in case you didn't get them, were watching placidly. Gets to third, Stewart at second, Jocko Connell is to first, and Lou Jordan back up home. Mm-hmm. Boy, this crowd is really something. They will all be fit for straight jackets when this one is over. Dodgers and the Giants. Doing battle for the honor. A debt the seven clubs must pay in the National League. Doing battle down to the last ditch, to the last rampart. One to one. Going into the eighth inning of the end of the end of the end. One game, two games, three games after the end of the regular season. Just one day before the World Series. And it's still not decided. And it looks like that it might go on and on. Westrom goes back into the New York Giant dugout, and we may have a new New York Giant catcher coming on. Nope, it's going to be Westrom. He was just adjusting his paraphernalia. Rattling pressure. One of these two teams is at death's door in the National League in the eighth inning, and we still don't know who it is. Still don't know. Would you care to hazard a guess? I wouldn't. I wouldn't have the vaguest idea. As far as I'm concerned... This one is completely in the laps of the gods. If ever we have seen a National League pennant race, which fits two completely evenly matched teams, this one is it. The Giants, the closing stage of the campaign, were unquestionably the hottest team in the race. The Dodgers, the first uh, part, were head and shoulders above the field. Now in these three games, they're equal. Dead, even, Steven, equal. Bagley to Snyder, who swings, beats a whistling foul down past Whitman. Hitler. A bouncer. Jake got out of the way, worried by that one. Now, uh, Pee Wee Reese starts back to the bag. Strokes his chin. Westrum walking part the way back out. The pitcher's man walks back down. Turns around, looks at the batter. Guys ready to crouch. Magley scuffing up the ball. The outfield straight away. The pressure is terrific. The Brooklyn Dodgers thought stricken two days ago. Back now, trying to stroke the Giants. First half of the eighth inning, one to one tie. The pitch by Magley offered down for a hit in the home. The play for the second thing. You reach, you can't get it. Here's Reed getting for third. He'll throw to third. He'll cut inside. He's in that side. He's after runners on first and third. One out. Reed gets on base. Jackie Robbins is up here now. Reed to third, Snyder at first, Jack Robinson the hitter, and Steve Pasco on deck. And now out comes Leo DeRocher to talk to the Barber, who right now is being given a rather close game himself by the Brooklyn Dodgers. That was a hard hit shin smacker, flanked by Duke Snyder, past Stanky. Jackie Robinson, the good hitting second baseman of the Brooklyn Dodgers with a 337 batting average and one hit in two times at bat today. Three hits yesterday, one the day before. A game-winning home run the day before that on Sunday is up to us now, waiting outside the batter's box in uh, the blue uniform of what the Brooklyn Riders are calling the Stalwart Line of Blue. Val well, Magley on the hill. Now we'll tell you about it pitch by pitch now. Robin Stubb at journey's end in the National League, trying to strike the fatal blow. Magley in deep trouble. The great barber pitching the mask to Robinson is high and wide with his first one. One ball, no strikes. One and nothing. The greatest day of them all in National League history. The greatest game of them all. Robinson batting. Takes it away from left of Reeves racing in the score. Here is Snyder around second, heading for third. The throw there is not in time. He's in third. The Dodgers lead two to one. Wild wow, pitch. Runner on third, one out, wild pitch by Magley, which 
the flow and the dirt bounce back behind Western to the screen. Set Lee's racing home to score and started from first to third. Robert swings at this one foul. Back, 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 back and out of play. Bagley, imperturbable right-hander, having been here this afternoon just a couple of times service apparently. Throws the loss of Bagley to the ground with disgust. Bagley was pitched in all kinds of weather in all kinds of situations. A logical choice for the big one here today. The last day of the regular season, the Battle of Coogan's Bluff with the Giants being slowly pressed. Two to one, the Dodgers lead them. At first, Robinson on third, Snatter. Andy Capco on deck. So, a moment ago, the Giant hopes were shining so brightly. Now are so bleak, so dreary. Strike call on Capco. Nothing in one. One out. Hodges on deck. Not part of the Dodger order up here in the eighth inning. The Giants, in the last half of the eighth, will have Westrum, Magley, or a pinch hitter for him. Probably the pinch hitter. Then Eddie Stanky. Then the tough part of their list in the last half of the ninth inning. Ralph Magley. Kicks and throws. Swore on. Beaten down the third base. Now, Another run came in. 
tortuously toward that last half of the ninth inning, which will be the beginning. Four to three for the out. Carl Ferrillo, Brooklyn Dodger batter. So all let off in the eighth inning. Throw the screamer right back into the hands of uh, Magley at that time, and it looked like the eighth inning was to be a routine frame. But then the Dodgers broke open like a white, ripe watermelon. Ganson trying to preserve the vestige of a giant chance. Throws. Perlo hits one weakly to the left side. A ground skinner picked up by Dark, who angles the throw on the right field side at first to the reaching Whitey Lockman, who hauls it back for the out. Now two up and two down. It will be left to be we read in the regular National League season now to keep the Dodgers alive in the ninth inning. This may be the last Dodger batter up in the regular National League season. A great ball game that they'll be talking about down through National League history for many, many years to come, down through baseball history. Jansen throws it down, reads it the long, long drive out in center, but Willie Mays is loping back, will be able to get out, he turns around, swallows it to the out to retire the side. It'll be the last half of the ninth inning, and a dramatic last half it should be. No run, no hit, no error, nobody left on base. And now the Giants, strangling, struggling for breath. Three outs away from Mixed Nation in the National League race will come up in the last half of the ninth inning with a score of Brooklyn four for the New York Giants one. This fella came to the New York Giants from the Boston Braves. The Dodger outfield is playing it way over to the left side. Jackie Robinson hands on hips. He steps off the grass down at second base. See where he reaches. Drives towards the third base. Short stop. Billy Cox is off the line. Deep back towards the Dodgers first. Now and reaches out. Swings it. One to the right side. Half back stop. It's left. Jackie Robinson runs for it. It is in back for base. It's for Alvin Dark in the last half of the ninth inning. Dark makes a ground ball wide up first. Dodgers race it over. Trying to make a backhand stop on it. Like he did on Don Mueller in the sixth inning. Or rather on... Uh, Stopped in the eighth inning, but this time it squirted off the glove. English over past Jackie Robinson, and by the time Robbie retrieved it, Alvin is at first with a base hit to open the ninth inning, and Don Mueller, the batter. The Dodgers have two pitchers warming up just in case. No sense saving them for next spring. You're offering, swung off, hit right down, and it's off into the right field for a big hit. Here is Dark around second, speaking for third. The throw to third is Johnny Tom cut off by Reese Dodgers. Johnny has a tie ready for plate that out. Now out comes the Dresden as the Giants, teetering at the break, refuse to be counted out. And this is baseball and emotion. in the right field for a last half of the ninth inning opening base hit. The Jazz have that very good hitting, home run hitting right-hander, Marty Irvin at the plate. Branca and Erskine are the two bullpen warmer uppers for the Brooklyn Dodgers. The Jazz about to perish, hanging on for dear life. The pitch, Irvin watches outside for ball one to the right-hander. Two on, dark at third, John Mueller at first base. The Giants strikes to make a last half of the ninth inning saving rally. Now Mueller at first base, standing close to back, leaps off. Dark leaps down the line with nobody in the guard against him. Leo DeRosha blowing on his hand. Making all sort of signals down there. Newcomb checks his runners. Here's the pitch to the right-hander. Irvin reaches, misses. One ball and one strike. He was cutting for the fence that time. Had he hit that one, that would have been all the way out and over and into Mamie O'Toole's apartment house window over the left field wall. Baez took a 360-degree cut at it. Arms over his head. Newcomb comes kicking in with it again. Irvin reaches out and lets a high pop up down the first baseline. Hodges over, waiting, waiting, waiting. Hells it in, and this one away here in the ninth inning is Friday Irvin to the utter black despair of the New York Giants fan. Out. But still, the Giants have coming on two very, very potent hitters, Whitey Lockman and Bobby Thompson. Thompson particularly has a single and a double today. Whitey Lockman has driven one single and three times at bat. The grieving Giant fans holding on to the last will be inconsolable if they're heroes after winning 16 straight. 38 out of their last 45. Out of their last 46, I guess it was. Cannot win the final two games of the National League season. The batter, 
Matty Lack from the Carolina Torhead. Matty Irvin just popped out. On back, Bobby Clapp from the Royal Scott. Bennett first and third. Tying run at the plate. Matty swings for a home run. Fouls it back into the screen. The Giants are going for that short fence. Left hand hitter. Newcomb throwing down his fireballs, trying to get him out of here in the last half of the ninth inning and brings the Brooklyn Dodgers their fourth opportunity against the Yankee in the World Series. The New York Yankees are watching here and are being treated to one of baseball's great shows. The greatest thrill that I remember down through my years of broadcasting. Whitey standing back, deep in the batter's box, waiting for the pitch from Newcomb, arms over his head. Big Don knocks up, unravels, throws. Whitey swings at the drive, takes it along the left field line. Alvin Don comes in. Here's the runner on his way to third. It's half-go bobbles the ball briefly. Down and in the second base with a tying run. Whitey wants the left field door. Now the Giants have a tying run. On second base, at third, at third. It's Don Mueller as he slid in the third. He must have wrenched his ankle or his knee. He has hurt it third. DeRosier looking him over. So is Al Thark. Bobby Thompson, who's been the big siege gun in the giant arsenal down through this series and then through the past few weeks. A 290 hitter will be the last half of the ninth inning hit. hitter. And now the crowd, perhaps in a hush. That feeling of electricity and anticipation in the air is in a sort of a hush, a sort of a, a quiet waiting feeling. And now the stretcher is being brought out to take Don Mueller off the field. He's down at third base. They'll load him onto the stretcher and cut him off now. Either his ankle or his knee, I can't tell which one. Alvin Dock is pointing toward the dugout. It's his ankle. Quint floppy heart Sandy Head, giant war sensation, former pitcher, former outfielder, now slaved almost exclusively for sometimes pitch hitting, sometimes pinch running roles, running at third base for Don Mueller. That might be all for Don Newcomb, too. And that is, Newcomb has had it for the sap stone. He'll get a kick and a soap and a towel for the last time in the regular National League season with Ralph Branca. Trudging on, the Dodgers trying to save it here in the last half of the ninth inning. Everyone is absolutely limp in the greatest game of them all. Brooklyn four, the Giants one or uh, two. The Giants have two on at second and third in the last half of the ninth inning. Newcomb has finally been shelled off the mound. His relief will be the Hawk, Ralph Branca. Rifling Ralph, who wears his number 13. And will that be lucky for the Brooklyn Dodgers here in the last half of the ninth? Newcomb against... Magley it was. It's now <laughs> to bring the drama to a close. Franca, the Brooklyn starter, against Larry Jets. Ralph Franca from Mount Vernon, New York, 21 game winner in 1947. A New York University graduate is going on the mound to throw for the Brooklyn and try to turn the Giants back here at the door of disaster in the last half of the night. Ralph Franca throwing. Ralph, victory record 13 and 11. This is Newcomb's game still to win. The runner is second. A tying runner is his responsibility. Should he win, it'll be 21 and 9. It's Magley's game, obviously, to lose. His record would be 23 and 7. Should he lose it? Well, what more can anyone say about this? What could you possibly say to tell you about the drama? It's like the fellow who tried to write a lead for a great sporting event. And he sat there. He sat after the game was all over at his typewriter. And he just couldn't think of anything. He finally turned around to an old-time sports writer there, and he says, fella, he says, I was trying to think of something. He says, maybe I can dramatize it uh, by telling him something about the setting here. He turned around, he looked over there, and he says, let's see, is that the sun setting over there, setting in the west? The old sports writer says, son, if that sun ain't setting in the west, you got the greatest scoop of the century. Boy, I'm telling you what they're going to say about this one, I don't know. Johnny Thompson, the batter. The outfield deep and very much to the left. Ralph Frank on the hill in favor of Newcomb. Rube Walker catching the pitch to Bobby. A straight call off the knee. A quick curve. The Franco rips right in. Franco has that tremendous overarm sinker curve that drops down. Then he has a roundhouse hook curve to right hand batters by way of third. Extremely effective against right handed. Two pitchers for Dodgers both in now. I think one of them's roll. Here's Bobby waiting. Frank of throws. Bobby swings that ball right there on the ball. Going, going. Go, look at the pass. Go, Thank <laughs> you.
shot if the Giants were all over him. It is this scene here is one of wild and the money in the like of which I've never seen. As the Giants win their 69th game in their last 47 starts, come from 16 games behind the Los Calum and 13 games, 13 and a half behind to win it in baseball's most amazing finish. And now the Dodger fans absolutely shocked go piling out of the sand to go to console their heroes and the giant fans who are at the uh, who are storming the dressing room door are charging in and trying to knock it down out of the clubhouse now have just witnessed the greatest finish in baseball history and they are intent upon getting in and smothering Bobby Thompson with kisses Ralph Franca Ralph Franca is the loser the winner is Larry Jansen of the New York Giants, 22 and 11, round 13 and 12, but who cares? Here he's in the National League, greatest National League game of them all. Giants fought off the final summit, and they were a team, if ever there was a team in sports, if ever there was a team, if ever there was a team that couldn't be beat, they just couldn't be whipped. Down in the last half of the ninth inning, trailing 4 to 1, Alvin Dock spared a single right. John Mueller had a single right, then on first and third, Buddy Urban popped up, and giant hopes were as black as the inside of a hog. When Whitey Larkman drove a single, drove home the second run, it was four to two, and then electrifying, something that absolutely shook this crowd right to its keystone. Bobby Thompson drove one just over the wall down the left field line, a three-run home run to bring the Giants back from the pale, to give them a victory, five to four in the National League race. It's all over, and tomorrow afternoon, across in the midst of Yankee Stadium, across that Harlem River, and we can see it from here, the New York Giants go into the start of a World Series, a World Series that the Giants have not been in since 1937. This is the most important New York Giants tramp since the days of John McGraw. And now DeRocher and his New York Giants go down in history, along with the names of New York Giants of other years, Ruth Markwood, Turkey Mike Donlin, Herzog, Frisch, Hot, Young, Christy Matthews, and Big Six, on and on and on. McGraw won 10 pennants here. He never won one as dramatic as the one Leo DeRocher has just won. Has just won. And that flaming spirit of Bobby Thompson, the Royal Scot, if you forgive the expression, came through in the last half of the ninth inning with the most dramatic home run of them all. And what more can you say? This crowd.